Greetings to all, and welcome back to the module on CH activation. In the previous lectures, we learned about traditional directing groups that determine the selectivity of CH transformations. We also examined removable and modifiable directing groups, which open new avenues for sophisticated organic synthesis based on CH activations. In this lecture, you will learn about other important families of directing groups, offering new perspectives for atom economy and synthesis. A promising direction in CH functionalization is based on the use of so-called oxidizing directing groups. Many CH transformations, in addition to the catalyst, require stoichiometric quantities of an oxidant. The most effective oxidants for CH activation have proven to be salts of silver 1 and copper 2. However, these salts are quite toxic and expensive. Therefore, finding less toxic and inexpensive oxidants is an ongoing task. An interesting solution to this issue was recently developed and is based on the application of directing groups possessing functionality that can act as an oxidant for the catalyst. The main representatives of oxidizing directing groups are presented here. With most of them based on derivatives of hydroxylamine where the nitrogen-oxygen bond is responsible for the oxidation of the catalyst during the catalytic cycle. Additionally, it has been recently discovered that inoxides and derivatives of hydrazine may also act as an oxidizing directing group. So far, all the known CH transformations enabled by oxidizing directing groups have been based on aromatic systems. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any oxidizing directing group suitable for the oxidative CH transformation of aliphatic compounds. Hopefully, one of you will develop one in the future. Here is an example of a CH functionalization enabled by an oxidizing directing group. The group of you from Sichuan University developed a rhodium catalyzed, external oxidant free, CH olefination of aniline derivatives, as presented here. They used aniline inoxides as the oxidizing directing group. The substrate scope involved various aniline derivatives and different Michael acceptors. Rhodium-3 is involved, so the CH activation occurs via a concerted methylation deprotonation sequence, as shown here. The reaction starts with the activation of the rhodium complex through ligand substitution reactions. This is followed by the coordination of the substrate and CH activation via a concerted methylation deprotonation sequence. Next, we have olefin insertion, followed by beta hydride elimination, leading to the formation of this rhodium-3 intermediate. In the last steps, there is a reductive elimination of pyvalic acid, resulting in a rhodium-1 intermediate. The rhodium-1 intermediate undergoes oxidative addition to the N-oxide, followed by protonolysis and ligand substitution, regenerating the active rhodium-3 catalyst. This process is accompanied by the release of the orthoalefinated aniline. The directing effect of N-oxides was demonstrated by isolating the cyclometallated intermediate presented here, which, in the presence of acrylate, leads to the formation of olefinated aniline in a 42% yield. The preparation of starting N-oxides is quite simple and can be achieved by oxidizing aniline derivatives with metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. Here is another extension of the directing group strategy. A modern variation of removable directing groups is known as transient directing groups. This strategy is based on reversible reactions. For instance, if your substrate contains a functional group that may not serve as an effective directing group but can be reversibly transformed into other functional groups, you can apply this strategy using a directing group that can be attached and detached to your functional group during the reaction. Let me provide some examples to make everything clear. For instance, aldehydes are not good directing groups for late transition metals. However, in the presence of catalytic amounts of primary amines, they can be reversibly transformed into corresponding shift bases, which serve as far better directing groups. After the CH transformation, the shift base can be hydrolyzed back to the corresponding aldehyde, allowing the amine to be used in catalytic amounts. Based on this strategy, recent developments include CH aerylation, halogenation, hydroxylation, amination, and borylation reactions. Applying the same concept, it is possible to selectively functionalize phenols using transient directing groups based on phosphonite. In this case, a reversible transesterification at phosphorus generates phosphonites derived from the initial phenol, with phosphorus serving as a directing group for the catalyst. In situ formation of shift bases was also applied for CH transformations of aliphatic carbonyl compounds. This approach can be employed for both aliphatic aldehydes and ketones. A similar strategy can be applied to CH transformations of aliphatic amines. However, in this case, one needs to use a directing group possessing an aldehyde functionality. 
Let's go through two examples in more detail. The group led by you from the Scripps Research Institute was among the first to develop this chemistry. In their recently published work, they identified three different transient directing groups for metal-catalyzed CH halogenation, aerylation, and amination reactions. All were based on in-situ shift base formation between the starting aldehyde material and transient directing groups, which included various anilines and amino acids. A portion of the substrate scope is presented here. As one can observe, the developed conditions tolerate numerous reactive functional groups, and the yields are above average. The developed approach was so successful that it could be extended to the late-stage CH functionalization of an analog of the commercial drug Celecoxib. Celecoxib is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and is one of the top-selling drugs in the world. The group led by you was among the first to extend this strategy to aliphatic systems. For aliphatic primary amines, they identified a suitable transient directing group based on aldehydes, enabling the palladium-catalyzed CH aerylation described here. The optimal reaction conditions are presented here. This CH aerylation worked with palladium-based catalysts combined with silver salts used in stoichiometric quantities. They screened several transient directing groups, among which the underlying pyridine derivative showed the best results. Furthermore, they applied the developed strategy for the direct CH aerylation of various aliphatic amines. The scope of the reaction includes both cyclic and acyclic amines. It should be noted that, after the CH aerylation step, they protected the amino group to facilitate the separation process. To sum it up, we have seen that directing groups can play a dual role in CH transformations. It is possible to include additional functionalities in the directing group that can act as an oxidant for the catalyst, thus eliminating the need to use an external oxidant based on salts of precious metals. The directing group does not have to be permanently bound to the substrate being functionalized. Transient directing groups can enter the substrate and, after selective functionalization, leave the product. This strategy is based on reversible reactions, meaning that transient directing groups can also be used in catalytic quantities. Now, you are familiar with the main directions in regioselective CH transformations enabled by directing groups. The directing groups discussed so far guide the catalyst to the ortho-CH bonds, which are normally the nearest CH bonds to the group. In the coming lecture, I will describe strategies for the regioselective functionalization of more remote CH bonds. Your attention and participation are greatly appreciated.